Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction in your testimony. How did you explain this? Hm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me and I'll make you cough it all up. Huh. Take a look at the floor plans. <laughs> you said you witnessed a crime from this point. However, if that's true... You couldn't have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. It's funny how the partition's coming in. I thought it was going to be the other way. But it's like, it's based on her looking through the chain link fence through for the partition. I was thinking the other way from like the security office. Oh. Through, yeah. I believe, I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this portion. If indeed you were in block B, you wouldn't have seen it. What? What? Order, order. What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up blood, she's coughing up lies. Ugh. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. There goes the counterattack again. I can't afford to get this one wrong. The witness lied about what she saw, where she saw it, the order of events. Hmm. I don't think she's lying about what she saw. Yeah, I mean, she has a photo proving that she was on Block B. I don't know. I don't think it's C. <laughs> you don't think it's the order of events? I don't, I don't know. Alright, what did they teach us in school? If you don't know the answer, at least roll out one. <laughs> okay, where she saw it. It can't be this one, right? Because she's she was saying that she saw it from Block B. She has photo proof that she was in Block B. Yeah. So, it's either what she saw or the order of events. I think it's the order of events. Yeah. She lied about the order of the events. This guy used that emergency phone before the murder. I, I see. I hadn't thought about that. That took the wind out of her sails. Uh, Mr. Wright, I had to bother you while you're celebrating your victory, but why would anyone use that emergency phone before the murder? Huh? Just when you think he can't sink any lower, he amazes us. I applaud you, Mr. Wright. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you are the orange peel lunchbox, right? I guess that teaches me to not get excited before the evidence. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. One more try. <laughs> Hmm, I see it in your eyes. You haven't learned for your lesson, have you? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. I can't for this one. She lied about what she saw. In other words, she didn't see Miss Guy using the emergency phone. It does seem hard to imagine how she could have. Very logical. Uh, what's the matter, Star? Cat got your lunchbox? Are you kidding? What? Huh? What was Wait, this is- wait, this is actually new. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Why lie about something so insignificant? Oh, dang, she's right. I mean, maybe she really did see her try to use the emergency phone. I see no room for doubt here. You are the- the what? The patooey on rice. What is happening? Uh, uh, wait, so how does this make any sense if I guess she where lied? she saw it. Well, yes, I know that that's the last one, but how does that make any sense? Because she literally has a picture. This th this is where this game drives me up a fucking wall, because how does this make sense? Like, I get that they're probably going to explain it, but, like, this is the least logical one. <laughs> because she literally has a picture of her seeing it from this block. Yeah. <laughs> this is some bullshit. This guy tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. Let's say the witness did actually see Miss Guy using the emergency phone. It would mean... Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. 
Just where was this witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard up now is pointing in one direction. Uh, uh, you're gonna have to save. <laughs> Just, oh, she I can't, even can't save. save here! Where does she see the crime? She had to see both her, like, by the car and the phone. She could be in the security room. I'm thinking it's in the security room. I mean, her boyfriend works in there. That's my... that's my suspicion. I'm hoping, because we can't fucking save. I'm just gonna say it, but it doesn't make any fucking sense because... Because how did she get that picture, then? I think we got it. Oh, run. thank god. What? Oh, the music kept playing. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security guard room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. But not in, but not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in Block A. The only place that she could have seen the crime and the black por back of the portion was here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Starr? How many years have you- have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables have turned? Today, a man has gotten the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilt will always be punished. And I would know as much as... And I would do what, it, what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilt? The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Oh, Mr. Wright, doesn't it strike you as odd? Why didn't Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. W what? If a witness is found lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Save the game. <laughs> uh, me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Please save the game before something bad happens. <laughs> Mr. Star witnessed a crime. Thank you. <laughs> Just in case we fuck up. I don't want to do all this over. <laughs> Miss R witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said that she was from Block B. There must be a vital... It must make a vital difference, but what? What would have changed? The angle of the crime, the distance of the crime, difference in lighting? What the... wait, what? I don't think it's... I don't think it's the lighting thing, because that sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> Why, the angle in which she saw the crime occur would change. The angle? What do you mean? Ah, uh, yeah, well... The security guard station's on the second floor, and, um... She would have sort of had a 3D view of the crime. And this is important. Why? Oh, God. Um... No! <laughs> no! No! Quick, press options! Just gonna... Blow the game! <laughs> just, just gonna... Just gonna... I'm not gonna lie to you, this recording's been lasting so long that I kind of just like blanked out and was having you read through this, and uh, I didn't know what I was supposed to answer. <laughs> I didn't read any of this stuff before this. <laughs> she lied, she lied, she was in the security guard room, but she lied about being in B, why the vital change, like what, what, what makes it different. Apparently it's not the angle of the crime, by the way. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna do distance to the crime, just because if it's not this and it's difference in lighting, then it's gonna m make it look really funny. Yeah. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Okay, this is different. 
My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. It's the same distance. <laughs> the distance between the seemingly crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time in which it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security station. Now, how long would it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Guy? Well, witness. You. Yes? You ordered the this, this squish wheels, right? I hate this woman so much. Claudia, my lunches are going low to inedible. I was brought a PB&J sandwich with fresh... Boysenberry. Boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Mmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed a crime from the glass wall of the station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. <laughs> Wait, she had to go around? That's why I had to go through the visitor parking garage at B. That's quite a detour. <sighs> okay. That's the dumbest shit that I have ever seen in my entire life. Was that even on the floor plan before? Somewhat. Like the, the outer the outer region? Yeah. It was there the entire time? I think, open up the core record, you can see the floor plans. Well, it's, it might have changed. They always let you know if it updates. Yeah, that's always been there. That's the dumbest <laughs> shit, I swear. Don't worry, I didn't know that was either. Like I said, I know who did it. I don't remember anything else about the case. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. F f five minutes? So you're telling me she ran over to the- she ran up here, realized the door was locked, ran all the way around the building, and then jumped the fence and then barely caught up to her? No, and she managed to take a picture in that time too, yeah. then jump the fence. Hmm, <laughs> this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defense chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have the photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. It is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. <laughs> uh oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do you have any evidence to stop this? To I don't, stop. I don't see any, like, bar things. What if I sit back and observe? What has that ever been good? <laughs> I'm gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> Just for fun. For funsies. <laughs> I think I need a, more evidence before I go sticking my spork into this mess. Woo, caviar! Oh, how it makes my eyes tingle. <laughs> Mr. Wright, no evidence can win against the raw power of caviar. It's a scientific fact. The only thing that's left is your strong presence and deft powers of deduction. Let's screw the lid back on those overpriced fish eggs. <laughs> so it doesn't either way. <laughs> Five minutes between the witness and the murder and the arrest? Think about it. You can make pasta with that amount of time if you like it all day. All dente. All dente. Was it raw? I got lunch boxes that that tie pasta into knots, rookie. Five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a colonel, what would you do in five minutes, your honor? Well, um. I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey, d d don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> it was the judge! But you have your instincts of a killer, you would run, and this time is different. This guy's... what does that say? Doddled. Doddled at the scene of the crime. She even had uh, her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconvenient... inconceivable. inconceivable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. 
Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Ray! No, that's too close. I'm gonna make this a two-parter. <laughs> I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, the court is adjourned. Oh, finally. Oh. Mr. Edra, you're the squid wheels, right? She's the one that she's trying to foil off on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? Thanks. <laughs> I might be able to save you. I have definitive, decisive evidence. What, what was that? Is this another one of their trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Uh, is this your jumbo lunchbox? <laughs> Woohoo! A triple decker! <laughs> Our deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. <laughs> This shit's taking fucking forever! I hate this trial. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest with you, I hate this trial. Now you know why it's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, I am. It's a bonus of torture. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is ass. I hate her. She's the worst character I have ever seen in any video game in my entire life. You, you, uh, what, who, was, who was your most hated character before this lady showed up? <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it's her now. <laughs> What's she gonna pull out of her lunchboxes this time? I, I, I hope she pulls out a fucking gun and kills herself. <laughs> I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the scene of the crime. But now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One, of course, is the victim's. And the other blood type matched the one of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. What? There was blood found on that shoe. Try Lunchland for all your lunch and the sight of evidence needs. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. As I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty investigation as myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Oh. Is, is that right, Mr. Ray? It seems so. Edward sure is celebrating. Wait, does that mean that wiretap that we pulled out of our ass in the second episode was illegal evidence? Probably. Because <laughs> we didn't tell Gumshoe or anyone. <laughs> Not so fast, Mr. Edward. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, the shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics team. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even from the general public, you can produce official evidence, Mr. Edward. <laughs> is that right, Mr. Wright? I don't fucking know. It seems so. Edward is looking pretty sullen. You can at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another account against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilt is properly judged. Wait, the victim's shoe bears traces of Goodman and Lana's sky blood. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. Why, that you're a little bit... Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess I should say, I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very own eyes. Compared to that, the five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? 
Don't make me laugh. For dealing with the most untrustworthy of vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, rearranged testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you find monsters, you need to use tricks. Every trick in the book. This one, the suspect really admitted she did it. <laughs> but false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Yeah, Sarah. that's perjury. Let's just get this over with. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. Why did I bring this up? And you found this shoe at the scene of the crime? I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with a shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon if that would happen. And this fashion basket I have here, it carries more than lunchbox, this gentleman. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. <laughs> In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now tell us what you did next. Two types of blood were found in the shoe. One, of course, was the victim's. So you brought it to the forensics department? If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it proved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensic expert. And she got away with her little coop because she used to be a detective? The shoe does appear to have bloodstains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman? As I said, there were two blood types found on that shoe. The other one's blood type matched the one of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. You can't say for sure the blood belongs to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood results, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up. Um, well, blood comes from four types A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether the murder was committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. Th that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have had a gotten a DNA test result. But they say there's very little doubt that it could be anyone but Miss Lana Sky. Hmm, so the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodwin. I was afraid that he was going to say that. This shoe proves it. It's flawless to sites of evidence. When the fuck does she get hurt? <laughs> I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's, she's in enough hot water to make an, like a whole vat of soup. Mr. Ray, do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Did we get his evidence? Check the shoe. Ah, there's blood here too. On the sole of the shoe? Must have been the victim's. He must have sat in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood, it's horrible. Hmm. This one might be an important clue. This blood, it's my sister's, right? I, it appears so. Well, his right hand was damaged when she, when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. All right. Uh, I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. There's a problem. If I'm not imagining things, I say that there's one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That beam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'll give you the pepper fish guts now. But you can't take the heat, can you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Oh, wait, is it actually the soul? Or... Oh, uh, it doesn't have, like, the little... No, because I thought we'd be cheating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
So, her right hand was bandaged, which means she probably did cut herself at the scene, which means that having her shoe, or having her blood <laughs> on the bottom of this shoe, I guess, is technically plausible, but how plausible is it for him to have stepped in his own blood? Yeah, because I'm picturing it like he was standing there, got stabbed, and then shoved in. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, because if we get this wrong, then we have to restart from our last save point, and... And it's like a 50-50 like here, like, because, like, it's okay. what, one thing that's really <laughs> bothering me about this game, and I really hope they fix this shit, is that this is so ambiguous. Like, like th th they make it sound so obvious, but in reality, it, it's just a 50-50 here. I think what they mean is the shoot, because Phoenix was like, oh, this actually might be a clue. Yeah, I think it's... I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this sole. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood at the bottom of my shoe. Hmm, indeed. There is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of the shoe? Oh, I thought we were about to get penalized. <laughs> Wound. I wish we can save. <laughs> okay, rule out things. No, 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 no. Wait, this is... probably not right. Cause, what? Wh how did it make sense to put the shoe in the shoe? Yeah. Can you look at the photo? Cause wouldn't it have, like, um... I was saying, like, if, like, what's so contradictory about it, if it was, like, a, like, during the scene of the crime, wouldn't there be blood on the floor? That's what I'm thinking. It might not be right. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. You can draw that conclusion, and that's, like, a totally plausible thing. But... So I don't remember there being a blood stain at the scene of the crime, to be completely honest. I remember the, the outline of the dead person. Yeah. It said, died from a chest wound. Lots of, loss of blood. Yeah. Sure. You know what? That's honestly, that's the most sound reasoning I've heard. The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the... Victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why aren't there any bloody footprints found at the scene of the crime? Uh -huh. As you can see, there is no traces of any kind of footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness. What? Um, I, um. Great going, Mr. Wright, but it's true the lack of footprints is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think! Hey, I don't know why it's not there. It's just good to find contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There's one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for an hour and 30 minutes. I'm gonna cut this into two parts. Leave me, leave me some room for error here. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. <laughs> Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, knocking over an oil drum. Oh, she's so beautiful but deadly. A predator this one, a leopard one. <laughs> I thought 
thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though well, apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, what well was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over when the chief by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What is, why the fuck is there water in oil drum? <laughs> Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you wanna know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. What? That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to the murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's the prosecutor's specialty. Erasing evidence. It reminds me, Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Hey, Mr. Wright, do something, please! What? What can I do? You want to save the game real quick, just in case? Your sister's right the rest of the crime. There's no trying to conceal this. He almost loaded up the... <laughs> but... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Ah, oh, fuck. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds a defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? M me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well, I thought you had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Under the lunchbox! A lunchbox called evidence! Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Oh, what the fuck? How long is this trial? <laughs> the time for deliberations has passed. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare me, the cough-up queen. Look at this. What is that? A photograph. I had it just in case anyone had the, gas the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. M Mr. Ray, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet! Oh, wait, I wanted to go back. Hold up. Which one was it? It was, it was that one. Okay, but enough you know, evidence, she's on the prosecutor's side. And she's like, how dare you assume I was on the prosecution side, you ass. <laughs> speed up, 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 I have a lunchbox. Oh, evidence. Objection. Speed up, Look at the muffler. Oh, shit! A photograph. The entire golf is just the witness of the shin or over air. Look at the asphalt. Yeah, it is clearly wet. Okay, there we go. Raising the last court of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this was what your sister wanted anyways. I'm sorry, Maya. Right? Wet or not? Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up to the absalt. Take another look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. 
I got this feeling inside my bones. <laughs> this is the last piece of evidence. Very well, this time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Objection! I was right. <laughs> Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? No, I can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph. The one, the last one submitted? This trial isn't over until we give each and every evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. I want to present this. I think it is. The problem is with the photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and I see. <laughs> What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? <laughs> so what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does it have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you already told us why this is so important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth and the muffler, muffler is related to this case. <sighs> <laughs> Miss Star, recall your testimony to the court. Oh, yes. When I ran to arrest her, she mentioned mu the muffler. That's what confused me from my earlier testimony. Muffler. Ugh. Ugh. Could that be the muffler you mentioned earlier? It was exactly this exhaust pipe. If so, that means that this piece of clothing is vital evidence. Uh, who? <laughs> no, the caviar lunches! They gotta be like, what, $100 a pop? <laughs> they got a lot of caviar. Well, though. it seems we'll have to suspend the proceedings. Thank God! Oh my lord. S suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that clock. The verdict will wait until we after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew! That was close. We we almost died three times. <laughs> but we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? My god. <laughs> well, Kyber, how do you feel? I hate this fucking trial. <laughs> Alright, this, this is how these attorney games are. The first trial is just trying to get by. Second trial is putting a theory and getting the pieces. Third trial is always getting the guy. <laughs> no, first it's, trial it's, just, it's just it's just all, all the stuff. In the, how is this trial being harder to understand than the last one. Yeah. Like, I guess all all the odds are stacked up against us in this one, but by God, this like, our the, the evidence is shit, we're being withheld from stuff, like, it's making no sense because this bitch is like, oh yeah, I was actually up here and just ran all the way around? <laughs> fucking bitch ass. I hate this trial. I'm fucking sick of it. I don't care who did it at this point. You almost point. hit my foot. Don't do that! <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. I don't care who did it. I'm just I'm just here to cry. It's okay. You can cry in my arms. Also, I'll... sorry if this episode started with no hello and the last one started ended with no goodbye. I could not be bothered. 
Yeah. I'm gonna cut this also, into two parts. <laughs> also, notice it says trial ladder now. Yeah, I guess since they're cutting into two parts. You know, that was a heavy duty trial. I wouldn't be so mad if this trial. That I was expecting, you know, a to be continued 50 minutes in. I was not expecting this one trial to be an hour and 40 minutes long. Get used to that with Ace Attorney games and whatnot. The ne the, la the later ones. The trials are long. <laughs> <sighs> well, this trial is just annoying because I hate her character. Wow, if you hate her character, wait until you see the people in the second game. I'm sure they can't be much worse. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sick of her saying, Here's your lunchbox! Here's your lunchbox! I hate Every, this character. Everyone, I need you guys to clip that, and then when we play the second game and have to deal with the Big Berry Circus, I need you guys to clip in all the ca all the points that camera's like, Man, this fucking case sucks! <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's not going to be any worse. <laughs> like, just I, because I, I hate like, like, like this. This case is fine. Like the 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 point. The freaking points in the evidence are kind of annoying, but like they make somewhat of sense after a little bit. It's ju it's just her one character is actually ruining this for me. And I even told Phoenix before. I was like. Was I dreaming that, like, she was a character, or was she actually a character? Like, I had to actually confirm because, like, I felt like I was tripping on acid when whenever she came up. Yeah. Because it was just, like, you know, everything in this has been, like, like fine, and people, like, make sense, and then she's just like, Have a lunchbox! <laughs> Have a lunchable! You like the pet? You like the pizza one? <laughs> yeah. Sorry to complain, but that's, that's my rant for us being stuck talking to this bitch for an hour and, a, and almost 50 minutes yeah so but you know i'm hoping she's gone i'm sick of her don't care about her i want gumshoe back i want i want she's not even a detective i even i'm even fine with von karma i'll even take von karma back over her he's not coming back man yes yeah, because i can flashbacks yeah I'll, I'll take Gregory Edgeworth back. Yeah. I'll take I'll take anyone else back. I'll take the. You're gonna take Gregory back. He's dead. Yeah. You get to see and, him. And most of all, I want Maya back. Yeah, you'll get to see her in the second game. Gregory shows up in the Miles Edgeworth investigations. <sighs> Whatever. It's, it's I bad. I've calmed down. My objective view on this trial. It's its ass. <laughs> it's irritating. We kind of like peaked on the last trial. Like it was, it was like fun and interactive, and like it was cool because like you got to see like not only Edra's backstory, some of Phoenix's backstory, some of like Von Karma's backstory, and everything. This one's just like, I hate these prosecutors. Have a lunchbox. <laughs> and then the judge is like, mm, caviar. <laughs> it's my favorite. And then he's gonna get a bill at the end for five hundred dollars for all the caviar he ate. He's like, what the. F yeah, like Robbie in that one episode of Victorious. Uh, yeah, we eat a big bowl of caviar, and they're like, mm, that can't be right. It's like, oh no, the, that weird sweaty child order a big bowl of caviar. Yeah, but anyways, thank you all for bearing with us. Sorry for my, my anger issues. Maybe it's for comedic effect. Maybe I'm genuinely mad. I can see in your eyes. I might be mad. But anyways, <laughs> uh, till next time. Yeah. Bye-bye.